It is not easy to serve people because I believe that there are many people in, in my constituency in Banyu Central who are more educated than me, who are more popular than me, but the people of Banyu Central choose to uh, elect me to come and represent them here. And I will make sure that I will continue to do the efforts, do the advocacy for them to have positive development and good laws in the Gambia. Honorable Speaker, I would like to talk about the condition of the my two prisons here. We all know that the prison is not in a very good condition. It's definitely not habitable. Uh, one main reason is the dump site next to the prison. It is definitely not fair for humans to live next to a dump site, inhaling uh, inhaling smoke from the dump site every day, every night. It is not fair. We are not fair to them. And I believe this dump site should be, uh, sorry, this prison should be relocated to another place. As far as the dump site cannot be relocated, the prison need to be relocated to another place. The condition of the prisons, we all know. The uh, the rooms are not good, the condition is not good totally, and, it's, and the size is very small. So we need another place which is bigger and, and move it there, and we need to build a modern one, a standard one for that matter. We are, each and every inmate will uh, be very comfortable to serve his or her term in the prison. I even, I even if the government cannot move it or don't have the space to build it anywhere around. I believe the um, juvenile prison, that is the, Myers, that is the Joseon prison, there is enough space there where a new building can be built. So I'm appealing to the government to do this as soon as possible because it is our own people who are there. And we don't even know that we will be there tomorrow, God forbid. So everyone can be there, so we have to make that place a better place for inmates to stay there for their period of sentence. Honorable Speaker, I also want to talk about government building offices, government offices. Government is spending a lot of money to pay rents. For example, the Minister of Interior, Higher Education, um, women affairs and the Minister of Environment, they are renting. And I believe, we all know that it is very expensive to rent those office spaces for uh, um, um, Pa'anum. It is very expensive. For, um, for example, I've mentioned this here two years ago about the relocation of the Interior Ministry from Banjul to, from Banjul to Koto. When they were in Banjul, they were paying nothing less than 300000 and they are now paying $3 million. It is very expensive. It is on the high side. So I'm appealing to the government to build new structures to accommodate government departments, ministries, and agencies. Concerning, ministry, concerning departments and agencies, you cannot name them. Almost all the government departments and agencies are renting. So we have to do something. We have to retire from that to save more money and make sure that those monies are used into other 
developments. Um, I will not um, forget to talk about the Christians' land, the land of the Christians. Their fasting will, uh, will, uh, will start day after tomorrow on Wednesday. During the third ordinary session of last year, I talked about it, that they should be given the privilege for their women to be closing at half past one or two o'clock, to be going home, for them to be able to go home and prepare food for, uh, to break their fast with their families. So I'm reminding the government to make sure that this will happen this time around. Because giving it to Muslims only is not fair. We are all here. We are all Muslims and Christians in the Gambia. So we have to consider them too. So I'm appealing to the government to make sure that this will happen this length. I also want to talk about, the, talk about building, uh, building at least two other new standard and modern stadiums to be able to host in international competitions. As we all know, we, are not able, we will not be able to host our game with, um, um, with chat in the World Cup qualifier rounds. So we have to do something to retire from these things. This independent stadium, it's, uh, it's more than 30 years now. And there has not been major renovation or maintenance. It has been only minor ones. And people tend to blame the management of the stadium, but I will not blame them because government didn't give them the enough funds or resources to be able to do a major maintenance at the independent, at the independent stadium. So I'm appealing to the government to do that and to consider constructing all the two new ones, one in Banjul here in the capital city and one in West Coast. At least we have one in KMC here that will help Gambia to be participating in, the, in, in, in international competitions. We have qualified in the African Coordination for the first time. And I believe we'll continue to be qualifying. And we don't want to be qualifying, um, playing in other host nations. We also want to be hosting. So at least government should do something uh, so that in the near future we'll be able to host uh, the African Coordination. Honorable Speaker, I would like to um, say that I will, or I will, I would like to pray for each and every member here who wish or wants to contest again in the upcoming parliamentary elections to be re-elected, because uh, we have been working together in a very mature and in a very civilized manner. Those sometimes we tend to argue, we tend to differ, we tend to have different different ideas or different beliefs, but at the end of the day, we see that Gambia is first, and we always do that. And I really want to see my friends back. We are all family. I would love to see one like honorable member for Bakao, who is my twin brother, who is my friend. I would also like to see my funny, my funny guys, my funny people, and my and my friend, Honorable Bakem Jai, and everyone to come back to serve the people. Because really, um, we all have the intention to move the Gambia from one level to another. Almost all of us serve only, only one term. It is only three people or four who have served two, uh, two terms here. So I believe uh, the people of the Gambia should give chance to each and every member who wish to come back or who, who wish to contest to retain his or her seat to come and continue the uh, great job that uh, they have been doing. So I'm appealing to each and everyone and wishing uh, everyone to have a very successful campaign. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member for Nyanija. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor and also wish to thank all my previous honorable colleagues who have spoken before me. Honorable Speaker, I might not take long uh, because almost all some of the farewell messages I wanted to say have been said by my colleagues, so no need to repeat some of this. But in a nutshell, I also wish to thank the Almighty Allah for giving me the opportunity uh, on behalf of the people of Nyanija to serve them in the fifth legislature. 
and also thanks goes to my family as well, friends, relatives, and uh, most especially the electorates of Nyanija. I have been their member for the past five years, and then I think I have served them to the best of my ability. Though there might be setbacks here and there, which you know that they are part of it. I am human. I might have errors here and there, mistakes here and there, but it's all part of it. Uh, I just want to thank them from the bottom of my heart and on behalf of my family for according me the opportunity to represent them here. I am one among thousands of uh, residents of Nyanija who are a bit more qualified than me to come and serve here. But I was choosing among a lot and then fortunately I, am, I happen to be the uh, chosen one. So Alhamdulillah I thank them and then thank them, thank them profusely. I also wish to thank the National Assembly, starting from the Office of the Honorable Speaker and the uh, Office of the Clerk, staff of the National Assembly, and special thank also to my colleagues. Uh, definitely, I see nobody here as a colleague or whatever. I see here my uncles, my dads, and uh, my brothers, and my sisters, and my aunties, and also most uh, profoundly my grandma, who is the uh, one chairing, who is who have been our leader throughout this legislature. Uh, definitely, I cannot say much, but just to thank you, because I have crossed paths with each and everyone here, and then I think I, we have a very good relationship, a relationship which you know that it will continue beyond the legislative chambers here, both to the wider world, to the entire Gambian, to the entire uh, constituents, and also villages and towns. I see everybody here as a family member, and then I wish and pray that uh, the relationship continue continue from strength to strength. I know some people have made the decision not to come back, but I think the majority want to come back because we came, we all came here in 2017 as new parliamentarians uh, wanting to serve the people of the Gambia, and I think we've tried, we've made history. This legislature have made uh, tremendous achievements here, and then I think we should be proud of uh, each and everyone here. So let's continue on those agendas, and then whosoever want to come back, May Allah make it easy for all of us to come back here. And uh, Honorable Speaker, I also wish to thank the Office of the Clerk. They are my friends. I call them my friends because they are my, some of them are my close, close friends. We do a lot of things together. And for the services that they have been offering us, definitely. It has not been easy. Sometimes you blame them here and there. You hold them. Sometimes you think they are holding brief on certain things. But that is the work. They are here to guide us technically. They are government staff, so definitely I was, want to thank them. Most especially my special brother, the uh, former director of table office and uh, the current deputy clerk, legislative and business, uh, that is Mr. Ali Fambay. He's my brother. He's a family brother, so definitely I want to thank him. He has been guiding me a lot. We have been agreeing over standing on procedures and here and there, but that is it. And uh, to the clerk, my also special friend, and also the deputy, all the deputies, likewise the staff, definitely wish to thank you. I'm just telling you this is the starting. Because inshallah, I think uh, the people of Nyanija will re-elect re me again. Inshallah, hopefully. We are, and we are going to campaign, we are going to seek for their mandate again. And hopefully if they wish and think that I still can represent them, that is their decision, not mine, not anybody but theirs. So I wish and pray that I come back and we continue the work we started here. Honorable Speaker, I also wish to thank the government of the day. Because Nyanija, if you mention Nyanija in the in the, in the initial, in 2017-2018, if you stand here and talk about Nyanija, people will be looking at you and say, well, one of the poorest constituencies here and there. But today we are proud. We are definitely very, very proud. And also we wish to thank this legislature because uh, since independent, we have not been blessed with even a single road, a gravel road, I can say, not even tar. But uh, due to the influence of this legislature through a supplementary appropriation, we are blessed to be allocated and then through the Ministry of Work and now work, work is going on with our uh, road that is from uh, Chairman to Nyanga Bantang. Construction is, in, is ongoing though there are loopholes here and there but Alhamdulillah it is going and then people have started, started feeling uh, the importance of that road because now at least almost let's say 30% to 40% of it is completed and then I think it is going to be completed in due course because funds are allocated even in the 2022 appropriation, it is there. So I just wish to thank this legislator from the bottom of my heart and also the government through the Ministry of Works and Infrastructure because there are many roads that could have been prioritized but they choose Nyanija 
and above all others. The Kians and others they have been have, have been cried and the body boost, but they choose Nyanija. So definitely I want to thank the Ministry of Works through the Minister and the Permanent Secretary. Honorable Minister and also we start other ministries because there have been a lot of back and forth. We have been to many offices, department, agencies. Uh, we are we are doing it for the sake of our people due to the complaints, the GFOs, because we represent them, we should advocate for them. If they tell us their problems, it's our responsibility to, to stand and make sure we reach every corner and get the message that they are giving us to the right authorities for them to act. Definitely there was nothing personal here and there because I remember some ministers sometimes I used to have push and pull with them, but that is it. it, it sometimes it is it has to be done for our for the plight of our people to be taken care seriously. On a general note, definitely honourable speaker, I wish to thank my colleagues because as I said earlier, we've done history in the Gambia. As the Honorable Speaker rightly mentioned in her communication during the morning, in the morning rather, definitely we have done a lot and we should be proud of each and every member of the National Assembly, especially this fifth legislature, from the service to the members. We have done history indeed. And uh, to conclude, I want to forgive everybody because as a Muslim, if you are with people and then you are probably some are party, some are taking a different direction, you need to forgive and uh, forget what have passed. I might have offended many because almost I can say 90% of the members of the parliament are older than most of us here. So we were young amongst you, calling you all sort of names. So I'm definitely seeking forgiveness. And from my end, I have given, I have forgiven anybody who have offended me, either knowingly or unknowingly. And then in conclusion, Madam Speaker, in conclusion, Two times. This is the second conclusion. <laughs> our foros, our foros, our women, our foros. This is something which you know that is very close to my heart because I can remember every agenda debate I will talk about this thing. For the past years, from 2017 to 2020, I think we've lost three lives due, due to the bad words of our foros in Nyanija. Uh, this is what we have. This is what we have. Uh, we cannot do away with it. We have to. We go into our forest to be cultivating our rice and so on and so forth. And we will continue to do it and we will continue to cry the government to make sure that it looks at the plight of our women, women and men in Nyanija, especially with regards to our forest. Our women need special attention to make sure that they have access to their forest. That's the main, main headache in Nyanija today. If you see these women struggling, entering inside these waters until they access their forest, lie, you will sometimes want to cry. But is something which you know that they cannot do away with this where they depends for their living for their whatever so definitely is something which you know that i said i have to make as my concluding remark this is an issue that is not solved it is still there we are still using our natural way of accessing our rice fields you see women entering in waters up to their neck going to access their rice field both during the rainy season and also sometimes in december and january so it's something which you know that uh, we have to take up mm -hmm. and the government through the office of the vice president and the ministry of agriculture something we you know they have to take up and look at closely and make sure that they find ways and means of addressing it i know it involves a lot of cost it's a bit expensive but i think there is nothing impossible as far as uh, this is a country and the, and the country of which we are all part and parcel so honorable speaker on that note whosoever come back here as a member of nyanija this is an issue that I will tell you to pursue, and if I come back, this is an issue that I will continue to pursue. But everything depends on the people of Nyanija. So from the bottom of my heart, I thank you very much. I thank you very much. Madam Speaker, thank you. Um, Ban yourself. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would like to um, thank all my colleagues for being a great family for the last five years. And unfortunately, Honorable Cedia, uh, Honorable Salah is not around because I would have wanted him to hear the nice words that I had for him coming from the bottom of my heart. He's been a mentor and a great teacher. And just seeing him on the floor, was heartwarming because we knew that the assembly was in good hands. 
it would have been great to see him back, not only as a member, but as a speaker of this parliament. I think that would take this parliament to where we would want it to be. We thank him from the bottom of our hearts for the services to the nation. I would also want to thank especially my minority leader, who's reservedly been a great leader and a great friend to me. Honorable minority leader, I thank you. Special thanks goes to my constituency, Banjul South, for having the trust and giving me the opportunity to serve them. I stood under a party, but my campaign was driven by the community, Team Tahawal Banjul, whom I must mention before my last day in the fifth legislature. I must thank them immensely. And to the women of Banjul, I give them special thanks. Being only three elected members, female elected members in this parliament, I tried my best to open the gates for more women to come. Yes, the Gambia has been blessed with female vice presidents, with now a female speaker. I think we've had two or three, if I'm mistaken, female speakers. But I think 2022 has been the first time that an attempt has been made in this great nation of ours to empower women by opening the doors and enlarge the number of female representatives in this parliament. Unfortunately, it was negated against our own standing orders. Madam Speaker, my journey started in 2017 when I was voted in office. In August 2017, I established my foundation, named after my beloved grandparents and the street that I grew up in called Yai Denton. And through that foundation, I empowered women, children, and the vulnerable people of Banjul. And I proudly stand here to say that I have five students at the University of the Gambia. I have eight students at MDI. I have a dozen students at the Presentation Girls Vocational Center. Madam Speaker, all that has been through the salary that I have collected from the last five years in this August Assembly. Madam Speaker, when I decided to run for office, it wasn't to look for a job. It was to share some of the privileges I had growing up, knowing that there is no structured welfare system in this country. Madam Speaker, I came to this parliament thinking that I could be part of the change to help change some lives of people in my constituency. And thank God, I can at least say that I have done my part. Madam Speaker, as a woman, I do not want to be seen as the tree hiding the forest for other women. Madam Speaker, I always look forward to being in the forest and looking at the interest of all other women. Sometimes I feel grateful that I have never seen hardship in my life. That doesn't mean I do not feel hardship of other people. Madam Speaker, that was the reason I gave up my job to be a representative of the people. And Madam Speaker, I have not regretted coming to this parliament. I have not regretted knowing the people that I know today being exposed, Madam Speaker, internationally and domestically. Madam Speaker, 
The reason I said I thank people of Banjul South is not because they elected me, but because they also became my sons and my daughters. Madam Speaker, we have witnessed many bills like you have listed, the pensions, the Persons with Disabilities Act, the Women's Enterprise Fund, Madam Speaker, the CRC, and all that. Unfortunately, the CRC was thrown out from this assembly. And like my honorable member, my honorable colleague from Banyul North always keeps emphasizing, we pledge to ourselves to see a new constitution. Madam Speaker, in 2016, when we ushered a new government, we promised the people some changes. Madam Speaker, the constitution was one of them. Civil service reforms were one of them. Security sector reforms were one of them. Madam Speaker, I would love to see a Gambia fulfill all those promises. And I promise myself, when I come back, Madam Speaker, I will take up from the Constitution Amend Bill that was started, and I would make sure that it becomes law, Madam Speaker, to open the gate for more women to come to this parliament. It's not only coming to this parliament. More women coming to this parliament give more opportunity, give more economic development, and hence country progression, Madam Speaker. We have signed international protocols that call for women empowerment. Madam Speaker, we did not only sign them for the sake of signing them. We signed them to make sure they are implemented. Madam Speaker, I would feel ashamed to go back to the women internationally, face them, and tell them that our bill to empower women was thrown out. Madam Speaker, I think as women, we must try and endeavor to work and empower women. And I promise myself I will always do that. Madam Speaker, like I said, what we do, we made sacrifices, Madam Speaker. And elections is coming. People are going to tick the boxes as to what we have contributed in our, in our respective constituencies. I am proud to say that during my tenure, Madam Speaker, His Excellency the President has deployed the streets of Banjul South. Yes, it is through government, but it is also under my tenure. And I will also take ownership, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, nothing is done by the government without the approval of the budget. Madam Speaker, it is through here that the government can fulfill all their obligations. So it is a partnership. We disagree to agree, but the disagreement is not personal. It is for the country's development. Madam Speaker, I am a person of integrity. I stand my grounds, I respect my principles, and I don't compromise what I stand for because I believe that if a person believes in something and compromises what they believe in, then that person is not genuine. And I personally do not compromise what I believe in, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, you also mentioned that we enacted 53, 53 bills into law, including the appropriation bills, which we do, which we do annually. But Madam Speaker, the private members' bills that we passed in this assembly, one of them thanks to an honorable minority leader. People might say that they directly, one of them directly benefited us. So that was done for us, Madam Speaker. What I would want to see the sixth legislature do is to make sure, Madam Speaker, that we come up with private members' bills, like honorable Woolly West said, 
to make sure that people that we represent understand what we talk about in this August Assembly. Madam Speaker, 80% of Gambians in the rural areas do not understand English. We are sitting here basically talking to ourselves. And when we go, they see us on TV with the mic read. They say, oh, Ming Deputy, Deputy Wimungewa. They don't know what we are saying. So, Madam Speaker, we should also look into, look into that, Madam Speaker, and make sure that what we do does not represent our parties, but reflect directly on the people that we represent. Madam Speaker, Gambia is a very poor country. But if we look at our officials, you will think that Gambia is a rich country. Madam Speaker, the cars that our officials drive, the way that we lavish the meager resources that we have, Madam Speaker, like Honorable Woolley West has said, we can be a developed nation if there is the political will, if we have good governance. But Madam Speaker, we are still not in the right trajectory. Madam Speaker, for me to have taken my salary for the last five years to complement the social security service, social security system that a government should have done, Madam Speaker, is quite sad. In my constituency, Madam Speaker, we have a private clinic. I have an account at that clinic, Madam Speaker, for people in my constituency. Few months ago, Madam Speaker, we had a child that was stabbed in my constituency. He had surgery and he was being fed by a tube, Madam Speaker. Two days later, he was discharged from the hospital. We found him at home, Madam Speaker. We had to pay for his hospital bills in a private clinic and it should be government's responsibility. But because the people of Banjul South trusted me to represent them, Madam Speaker, I could not watch that child die. Had it been my child, I would have treated them. That's why I treated. So the honorable ministers are here. Please, let us be truthful to our oaths. Let us look at our portfolios. Make sure that we serve this country. Make sure that we look at the children of this country like our own. Treat them with the resources of this country, not treat these resources as our own because they are not ours. They are something that we share, something that we must protect for the interest of our citizenry, not for our own personal interest. And Madam Speaker, last but not the least, I am urging for Bandil South to go out. I got 58% of the votes last time. I want 80%. And Madam Speaker, be rest assured, if I come back, I will serve them better than I did my last five years. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Honorable United <coughs> Member Seker. Thank you very much, Ma. Um, as the saying goes, that every good thing, whether good or bad, must come to an end. This is how Allah created this wall. Maybe if we go to next wall, we all go to Janatul Firdaus. It will not end. But this wall, everything must end. Whether we like it or not, whether we do something good, people like me, I may be doing something very bad in this National Assembly. But look at it, now it is ending. I may be doing something very good in this National Assembly, but look at it, it is ending. So, that being the case, I thank Allah the Almighty for allowing us to be here up to this time. We were here in 2017. Nobody knew. We didn't know each other. Me, the only people I knew was were um, Honorable Banyul South, Honorable Banyul Central, and Honorable Banyul North, and Wuli, and then Serekunda, and then only few people. Yakuma, I didn't know Yakuma that much. The same thing happens to Kadi. I didn't know Honorable Nyasi. I didn't know Honorable Baji. But look at it. Now we are families. We are families. 
we know each other for five good years. What were we doing? What was the legacy that we were talking about? And what about the history that we were all talking about? Anytime I stand here to, to, to make an adjournment debate, I talk about legacy, I talk about priorities, I talk about strategies, you name them. But now I am happy that when I listen to the radio, I hear talking, people talking about priorities. I say, aha, now it is coming. So th that, is the, that is the essence of it. That is the essence of it. And I thank the National Assembly members, everybody, starting from the service. I'm not counting anybody's name, but I want to thank everybody for allowing me to, ha to leave a good legacy, which is the Disability Act. It is ours. If I happen to be talking throughout, I also thank the government as well. Because if I, were, if I uh, happened to be standing here talking, talking, and deaf ear was given to it, things will not work. We have seen some things that are given deaf ear. Things are not working. We have to be honest. I thank the, His Excellency the President for putting the trust on me. I'm not the only person with disabilities here. And I am a woman. I have a vis visual impairment, but with all that, I was nominated to sit here. If I am talking, I don't know who is looking at me, but if, but if people are talking, I cannot see them. But if I am talking, everybody will look at me and know that this is the one who is talking. So that being the case, I thank everybody, and especially the president, for nominating me. Because uh, if you look at, for me, all the constituencies are my constituency. Because if you look at all the constituencies, there are persons with disabilities. And I can remember my, my late uh, chairperson, Mohamed Kora, may his soul rest in perfect peace. When we went to social welfare, and I found that it was only physically challenged that we are catered for, it came to my mind and I asked, Mohamed, why, why is it that only physically challenged are, are catered for? What he told me was that this is not from the government. This is from Emos Foundation in, in, in Sweden or I don't Sweden or Denmark. Though these are the ones who are sponsoring. So I said, what about our organizations? What are we doing? He said, if you see us having all this uh, little development, it's because of our, constitu uh, our, our organizations. I said, and what about the government? He said, ah. You, you are much younger, but you, ask, you always ask questions. So for me, that is why when I came here, I was thinking about all these questions that I was asking to my late president, Mohamed Kora. He was our president of the Gambia Organization of the Visually Impaired, and then after the chairperson of the, of the, the federation. He's, we started the federation. By time, that, that time, I was much younger. Wherever they're going, they always come and pick me up. Sometimes my parents will say no. And Muhammad will sit, uh, Honorable Serekunda will witness me. They will sit to make sure that my parents allow me to go. I was not the only, visual, uh, the only person with disabilities. But wherever we go, people will want to see me and they just want me to go. It's not me, it's the Gambians. The Gambians who made me what I am and who I am today. So I will leave no stone unturned by putting my, my, my efforts, my abilities, everything to the Gambia. Even if I know that if I do something, I will die. I make sure that I do this development and die. So that being the case, we are all here. And today is our last session. Hopefully, hopefully, some of you may come back. Hopefully. Hopefully, some of you may not come back. But what I am praying is that may all of you, all of you here, stay in this uh, uh, fifth legislation to be back, including this speaker, everybody to come back and we be together. Because we need an other time because of what we started, it has to be completed. Look at what we started. We started to call the finance minister to come here and sit the whole day sweating. We ask him questions. What is this? What are we going to do with this? 
We call her Excellency, the Vice President, to come here, sweating. We ask her questions. And these are very diplomatic people. So, as everybody used to say, this National Assembly is not a small thing. For me, I was thinking that ministers are higher. Because when I was, when I was nominated and my, my people came to me, everybody came to me, and what they were telling me is that this is the first thing, you may be a minister. And I was so happy. I told them, amen, amen, I will be the minister. But when I came, I knew that I don't want to. <laughs> if I am going away, let me not be a minister. But what, what, what I did, where I am now, is, is, is higher than being a minister. So, hoping and praying that this Gambia, we live in harmony. Honorable Speaker, peace is priceless. And politics should not make us to be enemies. We should not be enemies. If we create any chaos in this country, persons with disabilities are around, elderly people are around, people will not have food to eat, and do you think those persons who created this, where will they put themselves? Me, I will never forgive anybody, anybody on earth who is creating chaos in this country for us to have otherwise. Because our people are here. We want to enjoy our Disability Act. And we want to make sure that we have a good policy, policy in this act so that persons with disabilities will enjoy. But if we want to create problems, do you think persons with disabilities will enjoy our act? We will never. And any other thing that happens, nobody will enjoy the Gambia. And the Gambia has been a smiling coast, and we want it to continue to be a smiling coast. Ma, I am calling for everybody, including myself, to nurture peace. After nurturing peace, then we look for ways and means of creating development. Development is very essential. We need nothing but development. We need our country to be developed. We don't need the social medias where persons will go and insult each other. That is not what we want. Insulting will never create any development. Insulting will create hatred. But hate speeches will create hatred. And that is what we are all looking forward to. Ma. Uh, if you talk about development, we, let's talk about sustainability. Sustainability. In our hall, we have started it, but I don't think I'll be able to continue. We have started to expand it for sustainability. But I cannot continue, and I'm looking forward for even the president to, 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 to come across and see what he can do for our hall, for Govi Resource Center. We have a hall where you know that it will be, it, it was started by some philanthropists. And then later on, I started, I, I also involved, but I cannot do it all. Now what is left is the toilets and then, then some finishing. Maybe people will go there and visit and see what I am talking about. And everybody, the vice president, the ministers, everybody should go to Govi and see what we are doing there because we don't have any other place for persons with disabilities. Even the Federation is hosted by Govi. Do you know why? We were all together. Persons with visually impaired, we were together. We came to, even if we have our meetings, we make sure that we contribute for our organizations to be developed, plus the philanthropists who are coming, and plus some other supports from the, 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 the tourism industry. That is where we are, even for the, for the, for the for the uh, federation to have their land is a problem. The federation is hosted by Govi. And do you know why we are, it is hosted by Govi? We open our hands for people to come. Some persons with disabilities may say some words that they should not even say, but I will not mind them. I make sure that persons with disabilities will prosper. And that is what I will put in mind, whether my mom and dad are insulted. Because I want persons uh, with disabilities to, 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 to prosper. Do you know why? The mighty diabetes is here. The mighty hypertension is here. Everything is here. 
accidents are here and persons with disabilities if this country is full with persons with disabilities who will help us it's better we rehabilitate that if you have a disability there must be an other avenues where you know that your disabilities will help you so that being the case whoever has a disability if we have a good uh, a, a disability rehabilitation center persons with disabilities will not be isolated anymore and this is my wishes even if i am going if i am dying today i go home and die at home let everybody call uh, persons with disabilities to come and pray for me and then what you will write to put it in my graveyard together with you that all persons with disabilities should be prosper and we all here all of us in one way or the other we all have disabilities in one way or the other some are short some are tall some are absent-minded some are hot-tempered it happens and when all those things happens you have at least one one type of disabilities in one way or the other some are short-sighted some are long-sighted some are totally blind some are visually impaired look at look at what is happening sometimes you, you you grow up with your limbs and all of a sudden one of them is gone or even two or your leg and your and your and your hand is gone so where are we it's only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is capable of what he is who is capable of what he is that being the case i want to thank my family my husband my child who have been with me since childhood wherever i go he will follow me but uh, thank you may allah pay you wherever i go you are with me i thank you very much and hope that you your children will do this for you i thank everybody everybody i thank and it is always difficult to say goodbye but we have to say goodbye to each other and whenever we meet each other we will make sure that we embrace each other let us have that in mind keep on embracing each other even we continue with our group chat we chat that we are from the national assembly we we are the, the fifth legislature i thank my husband sincerely wherever i go sometimes he will follow me all my children they all follow me they will not say that my mom my mom has a visual impairment or whatever they all take me as their 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 their, their, their role models and we have seen some people some 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 children of persons with disabilities that is why i always say that we want to assist them because i know what is happening i know what is happening wherever you go you see persons with disabilities we are at the bottom of the table persons with disabilities are at the bottom of the table that is why we need representation we should represent we should have representation everywhere we should advise we should make sure that everywhere we are they make sure that we are put in that place some of us at least we know something at least to advise the government the, the 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 ngos everywhere to make sure that persons with disabilities can do something do you know why we do our work wholeheartedly and we have good minds for everybody let us have good intentions to thank you honorable thank you it's okay thank you very much um honorable minority leader Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Honorable Speaker, let me also thank the Almighty God for giving me the strength and health to serve the people of Nyamina Dankunku in this fifth legislature and the fourth legislature, because I'm a second time. Honorable Speaker, I thank you, thank the Deputy Speaker, the majority leader and my colleague. Honorable Speaker, I would also thank the cabinet ministers who are always present with us when we are discussing the course of this country. Honorable Speaker, I would also thank the office of the clerk who are our technicians for a job well done. They are never tired. As long as we are here, we are with them. 
Honorable Speaker, I will also thank the media fraternity because whatever we discuss here, without them it cannot be disseminated um, uh, to the general population. And they have been here also with us for all time. Honorable Speaker, your farewell statement almost covered whatever we are discussing here. Because you being the head of the institution, actually, if you give a farewell statement, it will actually cover everything that we are discussing here. I have been listening since in the morning. All those who spoke actually seem extracted from your farewell statement. So I thank, I thank you for that. Honorable Speaker, this assembly came in April 2017 with six political parties, one independent. Up to date, Honorable Speaker, we are working harmoniously to see how this country develops. As you mentioned in your statement, 53 bills were passed in this assembly for the past five years. And any member who approved any of this bill, his intention for the bill to improve the lives of the Gambian people. None of us went for, ele went, went, went for election just to see that your constituency is underdeveloped. We all came here to make sure that our constituency, we represent the people who elected us. Unless and until maybe the, it may be the issue of caste, lack of enough caste for the state. This is why today other members, their area is being developed. Then you have other, other members, their area is not developed. And then I think the executive who are responsible of policies and programs will try to look at that trajectory of development. Honorable Speaker, I will come back and thank my, my colleagues. For the past five years, we are here. We have seen other parliament where you have only two political parties. You see the controversies that happen in those parliament. But here, I can say it is very difficult for you to see any of us actually even arguing bitterly. And then I think, thanks to our beautiful culture too, it also actually, uh, actually may um, uh, actually improve certain things. Because if I should look at Honorable Member Fonyani, first, the first thing I would consider what is within me and him is whether he is older than me or I'm okay, I'm older than him. This is how we approach here one another. Uh, honorable colleagues, I thank you. Whatever was presented here at the floor of the house, for me, I believe there is nothing, there was nothing like partisan. It depends what is the opinion of that uh, of, the, uh, of the member on what is presented. If it was about partisan, always we will have chaos within this assembly. But that does not exist. Honorable, member, uh, my honorable Speaker, I would still thank the members of the National Assembly of the Gambia. If we know the burden, I serve as a member of parliament for two terms. National Assembly members of this country, Honorable Speaker, they are everything. The member for Banjul South have already outlined some of the issues, some of the, um, the sponsors he was doing. There is no National Assembly member here in, the, um, in this assembly. In one way, you did not pay for a hospital bill or you did not pay for a scholarship. In one way, either you, you, you develop a foundation or they will come individually, you give them their goal. This is how the National Assembly members of this country survive. It is very hard. Any of the National Assembly to sustain, to go with his salary for one week, one week is finished. They serve as fathers, they serve as mothers, they serve as brothers. Honorable colleagues, I thank, I thank you for, for your 
fantastic representation. Honorable Speaker, when you um, read your statement, you outlined some challenges. These challenges, I will throw it to the finance minister, who is a very close uh, working mate of the National Assembly. I don't think it will be fair for us to be looking for a donor to come and build offices for members. Let us use state funds. Let us use state funds to build offices for National Assembly members. And then I think the finance minister is here sitting down. I believe by his next budget, he will try and then have a development budget for the National Assembly, um, for this National Assembly, so that members of parliament who is representing the population of this country are having offices where they can work without, without any hindrance. You find them here, even when they engage they are, um, uh, how to call, they are constituent members here. You will find them sitting at the corridor there. Or we will all go and then fit on, um, in the two offices we have. I think it is high time uh, for the executive, definitely, um, uh, especially the finance minister, you consider factory in, um, uh, in the budget. If not, by next time, maybe you will find it difficult to pass your budget. Honorable, honorable Speaker, as I mentioned earlier, we have enacted 53 bills, motions, we did not calculate motions and grants. We have see, see the massive development that happened in this country for the past five years. You can start it from Basse, you can count series of infrastructural development that has happened in this country. And it could have not have been happened without the approval of this National Assembly. This is why sometimes if you see the electorate are accusing their, their National Assembly members, you don't do anything, sometimes it's funny. Because any, any development that happened in this country, any development, whether infrastructure whatsoever, it must be approved here. And the approving is done by all of us. So any road construction that is done in Pase, a member of all entire constituencies definitely contributed. Because there was no, no a day a government, the, 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 the executive came with their policy that is affecting the, the member for Woolly West. I said, no, it's because of, it is affecting the member for Woolly West. I, I, I disagree. We don't operate like that. So, Honorable, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, I think I will not uh, definitely belabor the, 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 the House. You have a lot of members, but I think this is what I have to, to say. I will be I'm actually very precise. It's just to, um, just to thank my colleague. Again, we are going for election. Honorable members, if, if it was not the law that, okay, we all have to go back for, to contest, recontest the election, it was just for, to handpick. We, we, are, we are all going to come back because I don't see anything that happened for the past five years, maybe that would warrant it some of us uh, actually not to come back. We are here, all what we are doing here is to make sure that the interest of the country is achieved. Honorable Speaker, before I, um, I, 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 I take my seat, I will join my colleague also to congratulate the member for Serekunda. We all see for the past five years, not only that, in fact, before he came to Parliament, we see how he definitely stand for his country. I can, there was a time when I heard him speaking, saying at the age of 15, he started struggling to see that this country have developed to a level we have a better system of, um, of government or a better development in this country. And then, Honorable Speaker, I think whether it will be you or any um, the incoming peace speaker, 
it's high time we develop an insignia so that veteran people like this, if they are going, they are decorated with that insignia so that any time they, have, they found that, that insignia in their table, their memory will actually refresh what has happened back. And then I think you, I'm an honored speaker, you can definitely start with it. You start with a signature, any of the veterans who are going, he is decorated with, um, uh, with his insignia. Honorable speaker, on that note, I thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minority. Honorable Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for the opportunity. Um, Honorable Speaker, let me first of all congratulate you for the wonderful statement you made this morning in this parliament. The statement covers almost all aspects of the life of this parliament within these five years. You highlight the challenges and the success. The statement is a wonderful one. So I thank you very much for ably delivering this statement, statement of this nature to the outgoing parliamentarians. And this is history, this will remain as history. Madam Speaker, after having said that, let me also thank the Office of the Clerk, together with the all other serving members, officers under him in this administration. They have done well, we are with them for five years, and then at least they have done their best, giving the National Assembly members the opportunity of training and so, so many other opportunities that one can arrange for your National Assembly. I am most grateful to the clerk and the entire staff of the National Assembly. Madam Speaker, National Assembly is a very, very important institution. Without National Assembly, nothing works in the country. So as a result, I think government should look into the welfare of National Assembly members especially with regards to their office accommodation. This is very important. National Assembly members without office accommodation is certainly on call for. And I'm appealing to the government, the Vice President is here, here with us. I think uh, this is an issue that they should certainly take up to make sure that National Assembly members' welfare are being looked into. Madam Speaker, after having said that, I think um, I will come straight on to the issue of health, Madam Speaker. Health in this country is really a problem. We have been hearing people complaining almost all over the health situation, all over our health centers, our hospitals, are under equipped. The materials are not there. So it is the responsibility of the government to make sure that at least these problems are seriously looked into because health is very important for any nation. Madam Speaker, having said that, I will go to straight on to the Ministry of Petroleum Energy. Madam Speaker, Mining is under the ministry, and uh, mining is our resources. It's our natural resources of this country. If a license is issued to an ordinary citizen to mine our sun, our natural resources, I think government should certainly look into this issue and to try to review it, especially with the black sun at Kombosanya. Mining should give this country a lot of money that we, the country will use to carry out some of our developments. But if it is in the hands of private people and reaching themselves, government is struggling for its development programs. We go in for loans and grants. When our natural resources is here, we give it to people 
to exploit it and enrich themselves when the country is suffering. I think this situation needs to be revisited and looked into. It's a very important issue. We can develop this country with some of our resources if they are properly managed. Madam Speaker, on the side of the Defense and Security Interior Minister, Madam Speaker, when this unfortunate incident happens, including the two ministers, Minister of Interior and Minister of Defense, they all came with their technicians, including the Director General of NIA, Deputy Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of this country, and all senior officers, including IGP, the Committee on Defense and Security, all members take this matter very serious, and all of them were in attendance. The issue was discussed. What is the cause of this? And some explanations were given. Madam Speaker, it is the Parliament that should make this country to move. After having done that meeting, so many recommendations were made. They have explained themselves to the, the best of their knowledge. And the, the, why, the cause of this unfortunate incident that's happened, it is indeed a situation where we all should not allow such a thing to happen in this country. The security of this country should not happen that will bring problem in this country. And our meeting with them, they were very honest with us. They have given us explanations, the explanations that are satisfactory. And uh, the entire committee members, including the vice chair of the committee, Honorable Salah of Serakunda, was in attendance. Every member of the committee was in attendance. Because we take it as a matter of audience, and it's a very important issue affecting or happening in our country. Madam Speaker, having said that uh, I will go to the Ministry of Local Government. Madam Speaker, there are a lot of land problems in these countries, especially some of the Alcalos are issuing land that cause a lot of problem between the people. The Minister of Local Government should certainly look into this issue to try to regulate, to put in a mechanism. Gamtel, Madam Speaker. Gamtel in the First Republic is the one of the best in this country, in the sub-region. One of the best in the sub-region. Our own telecommunication company, Gamtel. But where we are today, what is happening with Gamtel? Even the proper internet service cannot be provided to the Gambian people. When the other private companies came in and they developed, the government needs to look into this issue very seriously to make sure that at least Gamtel is back on the track. Um, Madam Speaker, agriculture is the backbone of this country. That's the common saying. And without agriculture, without developing agriculture, investing on agriculture, it's there for us. Our rice cultivation areas, for instance, CRR. CRR alone can feed this country. But what's happening, Madam Speaker, any project that comes into this country, the sustainability is a problem. 
after some time it will all go on down let's try to let's try to call a national conference of a program feeding the current nation under the ministry of agriculture and all the stakeholders to be engaged including this parliament to draw a program that will help us to develop agriculture in whatever means if we cannot do that uh, we are just wasting our time we have to feed ourselves the land is there the water is there we can grow rice and feed ourselves we can grow maize and feed ourselves we can grow goose and feed ourselves why still banking on these foreign aids and loans um, madam speaker coming on to environment minister madam speaker our forests are all destroyed and there is no replacement I think tree planting exercise of each and every citizen of this country should be carried out so that we can rehabilitate our forests, bring our forests back to the conditions in which it should be. People make money out of our forest, destroy our forest, and as at we, as at we now here, I am stand, standing here. All our forests have all been destroyed. People are talking about even Kian West. We see ourselves force than Gambia. That is our problem. And then we should try to avoid that. Change the attitude to make sure that at least we develop this country. Um, Madam Speaker, having said that um, I think I need not to take uh, or bore the, take the whole time of the House. Uh, I think um, you have indicated the, the job of this Parliament for the past five years, what this Parliament has done. In your statement, I think anybody who listened to this statement will know that Fifth Legislature Parliament has done wonderfully well. And the Parliament is a very inst strong institution. And of course our institutions, our institutions in this country need to be strengthened. They need to be strong. If we have strong institutions, government comes and go, politician comes and go, what institutions remain? In the US, President Donald Trump was a strong somebody, but he cannot penetrate the institutions. Institutions are there. Some of, some of the things that he wants to do, he wants to interfere with some of the uh, institutions, but he cannot because they are strong. I see no reason why Gambia also should not have a strong Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, thank you very much, Honorable. Your time is up. <laughs> Your time is up. Yes. The microphone won't work. Your time is up. <laughs> thank you very much, sir. <laughs> For Gara East. Um, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I rise to acknowledge with admirable grace and gratitude the trust and confidence
service to people or service to one's nation, unquote. Honorable Speaker, all of us are winners, all of us are champions in our various domains because we have served our country for the past five years meritoriously with distinction. And Honorable Speaker, this is why my people have allowed me to throw my heart in the ring for the second time. And I'm greatly indebted to my people of Jada East constituency. Mm -hmm. Honorable Speaker, having said that, numerous speakers before me spoke so eloquently about the performance of your honorable office. And I also want to stand on those protocols, existing ones, to also pay homage to your high office. Honorable Speaker, it was said by the Bard of Avon, Shakespeare, in Romeo and Juliet, that parting is sweet sorrow. And Honorable Speaker, the longest journey must come to an end. Uh, this is precisely what we have come to the end of the journey. Honorable Speaker, it must be understood beyond all reasonable doubts that life itself is transient, it's not perpetual, neither is everlasting. Everything must come to a close. As we bid farewell, to our constituents, to our fellow compatriots, we equally implore them to allow us to come back, I mean all of us, to these hallowed chambers and continue our effort of nation building. Honorable Speaker, during the course of my work here as a NAM, representing my constituency, I must have trampled on the toes of my colleagues, assembly staff, either advertently or inadvertently. That is human. If that is done, I want to say humbly that I'm sorry. I want to offer my unreserved apology to all and sundry. And I equally want all and sundry to forgive me if I trample on your toes, either advertently or inadvertently, because I'm just human. But those people have been said that. <clears throat> I happen to be the chair of the Environment Select Committee and also head of delegation for the PUIC. And I work very closely with my flock, my members. And I must have offended them, whether knowingly or unknowingly. And I know they too must have offended me, whether knowingly or unknowingly. But like I said earlier, I'm just human. I want to ask for your undeserved forgiveness, as I am willing to forgive you. Honorable Speaker, diaspora. I must thank the diaspora branch of my constituency known as the Jada East Consortium. These people are the movers and seekers. They have done a lot for me. And I must thank them profusely for displaying a second to none solidarity to my humble self. I am deeply grateful to them. And I want them to continue on the good work that they have started. Honorable Speaker, National Assembly. Honorable Speaker, when I was coming here, and to blow it on trumpet, but I believe fervently that I've done my very best. 
although I'm not in a good position to gauge my performance. But this is why my people gave me a chance to come back and serve them diligently. Honorable Speaker, I also want to thank the Office of the Spring Leaf. I was trying to find a foothold, but thanks to your guidance, your assistance, for that guidance. Honorable Speaker, Office of the Speaker, I cannot thank you enough of your office. And I also perform some of the tasks of Honorable Member for Combo South. Honorable Speaker, those works have really exposed me and they have given me a wider world view of which I must thank you. It has enabled me to interact with diverse people in various fields and that has also widened my world horizon. For that being the case, I must thank you profusely for also availing me the opportunity to step in your shoes even though it's a bigger one for me. Thank you very much. Honorable Speaker, National Assembly elections is just at the corner. Honorable Speaker, we have a nation to build. And all of us, including our state functionaries behind me, top government functionaries, all of us share a common denominator. That is, we are all Gambians. That Gambian factor must be considered at all times. Gambians, Madam Speaker, will agree with me that by nature we are quite pacific, peaceful, and peace loving. And peace is a priceless commodity. This is why all of us must work assiduously in ensuring that we eschew violence at all costs. Because peace is proper, violence is horror. And I'm calling on all Gambians to go into the election with consciousness. Because we are a conscious lot and we belong to the conscious class. In any context, Madam Speaker, there must be a victor and there must be a vanquish. Those who emerge victorious try next time. Because ultimately there must be a winner. Ultimately, there must be a winner. Honorable Speaker, elections, especially national elections, tensions. It does not require much intelligence to say yes, only governments are allowed to vote. And make no mistake by telling me that whoever possesses the voter's card, you have the right to vote. You don't allow a foreigner to vote in our elections. That should be a no-go area. Election is heat free. And that this election is trouble free. We can do it. We only need the audacity of hope to do it. And that is in abundance as Gambians. Honorable Speaker, no Gambian will interfere.
ya mark principally for Gambians. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, honorable member for Bunduka Kunda. Thank you very much, honorable speaker, for giving me the floor. If I did not perform to their expectation, it was in 2017 when they elected me to represent them to represent them here and in 2017 i went to uh, a village called jara sanquia and as i was passing i saw a, a hut an old one which I decided to visit out of curiosity. And I met an old woman there. I said to myself, before I leave, or I completed my first tenure, this old woman and all the less privileged people in the Gambia lives not in, in her condition has changed. I begin to question, I begin to ask myself, how many Gambians live Third one, but I still feel that we have a lot to do as a nation than we have achieved. Therefore, the people of Bumbum who elected me some five years ago, I will want to tell them that. I will want to thank them for the trust they had in me some five years ago to come and represent them here. They are all with the cognition that all of us cannot sit, come and sit on this one seat all the people of Bundung, but they have selected me. It is one thing to do what is expected of you to do. But what I could not do, I would want to say sorry, but I did try my best. All in my dealings, I try to put my consent. My concern is my driving force. And I feel bad if I know that I cannot do all what is expected. It was hard when we came here. It was not easy. And I know there were many difficult decisions that you took including my colleagues. These are decisions that... So, on behalf of my colleague, Gambians, I, will, I want to say sorry if those times that we fail you. Honorable Speaker, I would like to tell the ministers that all what I said here were... I was asked by my people. It was a bridge that I, I built there before they construct the road and the bridge. In fact, I built two bridges along that stream. Yes, Bakarinjai Bridge. But later on, 
the road was construct constructed and the, build, uh, the bridge was now built to standard. And I'm happy that that is completed uh, uh, within the first five years. Because the last regime, the president went there, the vice president, everybody, the minister of work, it could not be done. Honorable Minister, or all over the country, everybody is taking it as an example. And it is one thing to set a standard, but it's another thing to maintain the standard. And where we are, and let it be and let him support. And many things are provided there. And it is up to standard. Honorable Speaker, a lot of things in Burnung are yet to be settled. All the roads in Burnung are dilapidated. Or the executive, the president, we all have a job to do. Please let us all do our job. Let our concern guide us in dealing. We are all Gambians. Reconciling with the opposition for the interests of the country. This is very important. Whether you are this, whether you are from there, whether you are, it is not important. This country is, is what is important. Every Gambian is paying a tax, a tax. And this tax needs to be put into good use for their development. For their livelihood to change. And I want to advise the president to the vice president. There is something that is attacking our integrity, attacking our development, which he needs. There is no room for tribalism in our parties. There is no room for tribalism in our National Assembly. There is no room for tribalism in our government, in the executive. We are all one. How can I hate the vice president? I cannot. If I can love a white man, why can't I love a state minister? Why can't I love a state a vice president? Why can't I love the president? Let him start, please, please, Mr. President. Let it start with you and it come down to us. Let nobody within your circle try to influence you or otherwise make you to do anything different. We have this small country to build and we can build it very easily if we come together. Honorable Speaker, I will also, before my time elapses, will want to thank a person that is very passionate to me, who is my role model. That is why I'm working with him. I know him, I was close to him. And he did not have any bad intention for this country. And, and I see that no one can influence him to do something that is bad for this country. What has happened recently, after this election has sold, what people expected of him and what happened is quite different. So there is no one here who have something bad for this country. Let us all come together as one and develop this country. It is an obligation on, uh, upon us. 
As a leader, it ha we have to set the pace and they follow. And if only if we don't do that, we'll have a problem. I want to thank and pay a tribute also to Honorable Ali Fasal, who won at this point depart from politics. But I want to say or appeal to Honorable, still the country needs you. Out of, out of the arena doesn't mean that you cannot play a part. Make this country a better one for our future generation that are coming. I remember late Sadao Dakairaba Jawar has a very good way of politics. When he's going around to make politics, if you tell him Chalo, he call you Ngunja. And you laugh about it. And it is Youths, among others, I must thank them all, and my, I also must thank them for building the trust, trust and confidence in me that they wanted to re-elect me again. Of course, I'm not forgetting uh, the operation front line, who are very strong youths who stood for. My consequence is to see that the consequence is uh, free Gambia to go higher high by playing the under 17 match in national team. On 56. Two among us were not with us. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them the highest Jannah to Firdaus and all the departed souls. Madam Speaker, us all exorcists both personally and professionally. Madam Speaker, uh, Honorable Magasi and Honorable Halifa Salah, who don't want to come back again, we will miss having them around us, but we cannot hold them back. Madam Speaker, monthly targets and performance will come and go, but the memories of working with colleagues like them will always remain with us. Madam Speaker, uh, I wanted to highlight some concerns in my consequence that I think we should discuss. Madam Speaker, uh, migration. Madam Speaker, Gambians and non-Gambians continue to pay a heavy, heavy price to migration. But this one, the saddest part of it is Three young youths from my consequence leave Talinding on the 8th of December, attempted to go to Europe through the pathway. None of them came back by the name of Fatma Sisi and Lamin Sisi and one Nyaling Sanyang. Up to date, we are searching for these young youths and they were nowhere to be found. So I think this is a continental approach that we all need hands in index to see that we do away with this migration. Madam Speaker, uh, again, another youth, a very promising youth by the name Omar Tamba, involved in a car accident. This boy was a goalkeeper who is playing in nearly all the nine teams in Talinding. But unfortunately, he traveled to Fonyi to pay a visit to the family, and he got accident, and the hand was amputated. And I'm calling on the entire ministry and the government to, came to his aid to help this boy, 
because he cannot do anything now without the help of his colleagues. Madam Speaker, again there is a Q-cell antenna at the Talinding buffer zone, uh, which my con community raised concern about, uh, because the antenna is paying <coughs> some amount to the council, but the community is not benefiting. And I feel it's high time, let me raise the concern to the Honorable Ministers or the Line Ministry that is concerned so that they can uh, map out the situation. Madam Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker, I think finally, uh, members have raised concern about the issue of uh, high pr price in basic commodities and house rent, which I felt I need to throw my weight there, Madam Speaker. I believe with regards to the high, uh, house rents, uh, we all need a collective responsibility because there are some houses that are in uh, KM which were constructed when a bag of cement was $25. But these house owners were charging 3000 or 5000 Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor to participate in this debate, the last debate of the Fifth Assembly. I thank the Deputy Speaker. Let me start with him. some on the standing orders, some on the way the bills are introduced, orders on institutional memory, etc., etc. So we thank all of them for their participation. Honorable Speaker, I also thank the media like others, for amplifying the voices of this Honorable House. I think the media has definitely done justice to this House for the last five years. They've done a lot of contribution. Media is also playing oversight over us while we are playing over also for the diligent way in which you've been handling the affairs of this August House. We all know it is not easy if you are an umpire. <laughs> it's not easy to maintain decorum in uh, an environment where uh, divergence is high especially with the membership that we have here, perform our roles as and when required to the satisfaction of our time. It has not been easy for ministers, especially those who are providing services. We are always, not only here, but also in their offices, knocking their doors for water, electricity, Etc., etc., as well as agriculture, education, and works, as well as, of course, security. Honorable Speaker, protection, which has been confronting my constituency well before uh, the animals are now protected. The stealing of animals and ruminants taking them across the border is 
greatly minimized. So we thank the Minister and Ministry of the Interior. But what I want to also say, Honorable Speaker, is the fire and ambulance services. one is operating, I believe uh, it will help the situation. I believe, Honorable Speaker, security reform will not be adequately done unless ordinary citizens feel protected and their properties are protected. And if we don't feel secure, then we know that uh, the security reform that we are talking about as speaker, we are talking about the intrusion of security forces from Senegal into our territory. But it's not only in Foni. In my own constituency, we experienced twice. The first time we thought that it was an accident. That they so let me put that uh, to the attention of the defense. I think you are aware that... Uh, the night before the elections, the presidential elections, bandits came into Saragubu and attacked a family and killed a family head in his own house and went back. There was no presence of Gambian security in that area. And when I intervened to ensure that security, at least do some patrol in that area, I could not succeed because there was no vehicle with the security forces that were placed for election duties at Yorobawal, and there was no vehicle at Basse, the, the, the military camp as well. So we should be thinking about that. Honorable Speaker, into agriculture, I would want the Minister of Agriculture to actually provide an update to us. for all the effort. Many people, many members have said it. Uh, when we first came here, we were complaining of water in the rural areas. Everybody was complaining, all of us. But a lot of effort definitely have gone to ameliorating the situation. But there is still work to be done in those areas. Our people need clean drinking water easily accessible to them. That is our goal. Honorable Speaker, for education, we thank the Ministry of Basic Education uh, as well as MRC Holland Foundation for building a high school at Bajakunda left to be done. And I hope that work to Banjul or Brikama to have secondary education. We should be able to avoid that now. If young people leave home, their parents, when they are just ten
meant to ensure that electricity is available to health centers. They have many uses for electricity. And uh, without uh, supporting government in their development endeavors and uh, supporting their own communities uh, in various ways to build up the uh, development process. There are two main organizations in Willi is One is Willi is Development Initiative, and the other one is Willi is Development Rehabilitating Roads. Others are repairing boreholes, wells, and even building boreholes for the community. And this has gone a long way to supporting the water. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm open your me. You, uh, uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. And Honorable Speaker, let me also seize this opportunity to thank you for your farewell speech that explicit and meticulous speech you have just made in this assembly in the morning. Thank you so much. We are deep in the past five years. They have been real brothers and sisters, and I really enjoy working with them. And also, especially the doyens in this assembly, the honorable member for Serapunda, Wuli West, Nyana Dankunku, and the member, honorable Majanko Samosa, <laughs> Honorable Speaker, I really learned a lot from these people. Let me thank here. Yeah. We never had a tar road. We never have electricity. And many of my communities were a lack of clean drinking water. But thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the government of the day, we have one and a half months ago, there are some burglars that enter into one of the circle in Opanyomi, and they stole some cars from the circle. But like, uh, they went, they went free. Some any effort to preserve the island. So I can tell you, Honorable Speaker, the island is an endangered situation right now. It can get extinct. We may God forbid at any time. And the getty also there is in a deplorable condition. We need to be rehabilitated. And therefore, if I'm making my last speech in this particular fifth legislature, you know, if I happen to offend anyone in any way for the past five years. Thank you. Madam Speaker, 
Uh, let me first and foremost thank you uh, for the leadership you have demonstrated during these past five years. Really, it is not easy serving us by sitting in that care. It's not something that is very easy. When you have the like of Honorable Sekou Bajaju, your leadership, you have contributed immensely in reshaping the democracy of this parliament. Madam Speaker, we thank you. Madam Speaker, let me also seize this opportunity to thank the member of Serekunda. Madam Speaker, he served this country with his utmost best and honesty. He did great for this country. I worked together with him in these chambers and also in the same committee called PEC. with him, he can see he will still continue to receive the democracy, the rule of law, and the good governance of this country. You go to Talimung, is the same cry. Some part a plan B. If the one we have in place right now, if that is not working, they have to come with a plan B to solve the water crisis that we are experiencing in KMC. Madam Speaker, you go to KMC, you talk to some people who will tell you that it's been days we do not call upon the government to do something about this. In action as possible. Because we cannot live without water. Madam Speaker, from there also, let me quickly talk about the price of a basic commodities in our market. Madam Speaker, what doubt me most is that you go to the market today, you buy something at the cost of ten dollars from the same sub the same product. Go there the next day, they will charge you twelve or thirteen dollars, a surplus of three dollars on top of the goods that they are selling. It is not a new product that they have, but the old one that they have, and yet still. Yet still, government is not talking about it. Madam Speaker, what we are experiencing in our market, look, yes, we have a system that we cannot impose a price on people to sell their products. But if that system is not working, what did we do? We have to change the system that we have in place. It cannot be like business as usual. The Ramadan is just past approaching. National market, we know what is happening. COVID-19, the impact of COVID-19, we all know what, what, what it is uh, doing. But also, sometimes we have to blame ourselves. Just last week, we have a performance audit report from GPA, Gambia Ports Authority. And the customers are complaining that. When, they, when, they, when, they, uh, when their goods come, they, it will be at the port or at the sea for some days, for more than how many days, and then they end up paying demolish. And those demolish that they pay, they also add that one on top of the goods that they sell. And then people like me, and then the poor voters will just pay the price. I think we have to do something about that. About this. Gambia government can do something about this issue. You look at that performance audit report. 
telling you that you know when our containers overstay, we pay them rate, and lease them rate also, we will add it on top of the goods. Some of them will tell you that we even find it difficult to locate our containers. And as a result, we pay extra, and whenever we pay extra, and that extra money that we pay on top of the container, we charge it on goods. At the end of the day, the poor government people suffered for that. That cannot continue. We have to change the way that we are operating in this country, Madam Speaker. From me, Honorable Sekumaro, right down to the Speaker of the National Assembly, the, the Honorable Minister. No matter how far you are, a ballot box will meet you. Honorable Speaker, if you go to health, let me also seize this opportunity to thank the Minister of Health. They are doing extra, they are doing a very, very good job. We all know our healthcare sector, how it is going. Madam Speaker, if you go to Bundu Maternal, I said that Honorable Njai, member for Bundu. There was a month, Bundu Maternal registered 733 successful births. And then my surprise is, Gambians are not talking about this. Gambians is a high time we change our attitude. We have to be honest to the system. If we are honest to the system, Madam Speaker, the outcome will be positive. But if we are negative toward the system, the outcome will be negative. Madam Speaker, also, there was a time also in Bumi Matana, they have registered in a month 631 successful delivery. 631 successful delivery. But all what we talked about is that the maternal mortality of this country is this, is that. But nobody talks about those successful stories. Look, it's a high time we celebrate our own people. If we did not celebrate our doctors, our nurses, our teachers, nobody will celebrate them for us. And all what we are good at is just to criticize them, day in and day out. Madam Speaker, and the, the last thing that I wanted to talk about, we all know the crisis in Ukraine. And we have some Gambian, there are some international students that are from the Gambia, that are there. We want to know, what is the government of the Gambia doing about them? That is important. We want government to tell, uh, the, the Vice President is here, despite the fact that the Minister of Foreign Affairs is not around, but the Vice President is here. We want the Ministry, we want the government to tell us the plan that they have for those people. And not only that, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, the plight of our Gambians that are in Germany, you know, we want the government to be clear and tell us what is happening. You cannot have the two ministerial ministers, this one is saying this and the other one is saying that. No. We cannot operate that as a country. Things have to change, Madam Speaker, for goodness and heaven's sake. You cannot have the Minister of Interior that says this and the Minister of Foreign Affairs that says that. No. This is a one government. Every, you can, every one of, us, uh, of these ministers are working in a government. And it's only one government that we have. We don't have a true government there where this Minister of fin uh, Finance is operating this way and not this other minister is operating that way. No. Madam Speaker, last but not the least, let me just make this very clear. There are a lot of issues. There is a lot of uh, speculation going around. And there is a lot of this commission that has been set by the government. You talked about petroleum uh, the petroleum issue or the petroleum, uh, yes, Gambian National Petroleum. There are a lot of commissions that are set. Madam Speaker, on that note, let me just seize this opportunity to tell you that I really enjoy working with you. Despite the fact that, yes, sometimes here and there we do push and pull, but I definitely 
enjoy working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I want to be chair challenges. <laughs> Honorable member for Serekunda. <laughs> Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. We were working on our uh, the report validation of the port's cargo as innocent. What, what probably we can do is it will be copied and circulated so that you have a copy. I think you will give me more time. I didn't hear what you said, Honorable Speaker. Speaker, we are here as individuals and as representatives. As individuals, each has his or her life to live, and no one will dictate how that is done. But as representatives, our words and deeds must have guards and fences aimed at protecting. and then look at the injustices that have been perpetrated against our own brothers and sisters so that we can feel the pain of torture and injustice and then try to remedy that situation, convince the other that it was a system that made what happened happen. But we are willing to change, to amend, to reconcile, to build a new Gambia for all of us that is still in the pipeline. It was my objective to be here so that together we'll start building a self-reliant, a self-determined economy for our people so that whoever comes tomorrow to lead will have a foundation to rely on. executive and legislature in order to serve our people better. We must start somewhere. We do not expect perfection. I came with an aim. That aim could not be fulfilled and I had to readjust, recalibrate my objectives to become functional in this parliament, to look at the standing orders, to work with members, so that we can instrumentalize, institutionalize the standing orders and at least begin to build a system and account. We have not achieved that, but we have achieved this. I was looking at Ukraine just this night, last night.
that each year to demarcate what is urgent and it comes with certificate of urgency. What is not urgent, we ensure we scrutinize. That's what we need, Honorable Speaker. Look at Sarah Kunda. I came to represent Gambia, sent by Sarah Kunda. Today, that is the same Sarah Kunda, without football fields, where a school, Sarah Kunda school, is transformed. In, that, is, that is relating to a Of water supply, should it be just these big pipes coming from nowhere to everybody? Could it be regionalized that certain systems are put to be able to serve certain certain areas to provide electricity water supply? We need a solution to, to this problem. Look at the drainage. We've talked about it. Engineering design not properly uh, assessed. So these are issues. They are they must be looked at. Honorable Speaker, if you come to, 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 to my home and you look at the street, every morning you see this woman in droves will come with their children five o'clock in the morning to occupy that whole place. A clinic is there. But even to, to, to move with, with, with ambulances sometimes is a problem. But who can you blame? Who is responsible for all those people? What should we do? Should we just look at things like that? We are not an organized society. We may not have everything, but at least you start from management. Be organized in the first place, and then work towards greater investment into development. Honorable Speaker, this country still is begging for a way forward. And if we are sincere, we will not fool ourselves full of self-praise and say, well, we've done well, well, fine. It's an assessment of well that, is this, that the, our people deserve. The well that our people deserve is to free them from poverty. And that is not the reality at the moment. Honorable Speaker, I believe in Uncle Sidi Ejata here. We used to have good partnership. He's very passionate and insightful. You go and study Chinese because they have incorporated all the knowledge of the world into their language, into Arabic, but African, so that they will know nature and society and about the world. That is the challenge, and a challenge that he, me, all of us must begin to address. It's a battle of ideas, battle of knowledge in the world. If we do not assimilate that knowledge, we'll be left behind. We'll go nowhere. To do. And I'm a happy person. If I die today, I know that I have done what I was supposed to do based on what the demand of my times and circumstances are. Development is demand-driven. Leadership is demand-driven. It's what will take your society forward that must make you to feel the pulse of peace. What we have, the foundation we have laid will be continued by all the members who are here and all the members who are to come. I am convinced that if we continue to chart that destiny, we will not be perfect. Each of us will have certain interests, 
but collectively, just like our and we must not close our eyes to it. We'll fight our battles to come back into this parliament. We'll say many things. But after doing so, let's sit down again and ask ourselves, what is the use of being a representative? Is it transforming this place into a talking shop where we just talk? Or are we going to feel the suffering? Thank you very much, Honorable. Um, Honorable Member for Busumbala. Uh, we, continue, we promise to continue on his, on his footstep. Um, he is a role model since I was going to school. He and uh, honorable member for Willy West, they were a, a my role model when I was going to school. I followed them anywhere they are in preaching us on how a govern, gov, 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 uh, the country should be governed. You can see, for the trust that they have in me to <coughs> elect me to serve them for these five years in the National Assembly. Um, but also, I can do what I have done uh, better if I didn't have the support of the Office of the Speaker, Office of the Clerk, and all staffs of the National Assembly. Um, for the generous training that they offered and guidance uh, when I came newly into the National Assembly, because we used to say, and I also want to sincerely thank my two parents who gave me the guidance and the education to be able to be who I am today. And I'm ready to continue to serve the people of Busumbala constituency. Madam Speaker, when I was elected into the, to the office of the MP, they highlighted some issues that I should uh, specifically mention and try to advocate for them on their behalf. Um, to represent the whole Gambia, that's why, that's why I took part in all the 53 bills that you've mentioned, Madam Speaker, in your statement in the morning. I have attended all sessions and almost all committee sessions since 20. I've raised enough they will do that. Road construction, the government have done a little because in Banjulunding I'm able to get some my people health. I am able to, with, the, with the government um, to get at least three uh, ambulances and two hospitals so far have been done, but these are the issues that I have uh, I've achieved with the government in, inside of health in my, in my, in my constituency. Education, uh, schools have been built, schools have been expanded, schools have been in, upgraded. Uh, the Busumbala Farato has been, it's now been upgraded. Uh, New Indom also has been upgraded to, uh, to uh, senior secondary schools. Security, um, I'm able to uh, lobby through, through the Ministry of Interior, to, uh, through the Office of the IGP, which is in the high year with, with them. Instead of agriculture, I am able to, with the government and other, 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 other uh, offices, I am able to be able to have a secure fencing for the Yundum uh, Women Garden, Mandinaring Women Garden. So now I'm working with the Ministry of Agriculture for the fencing of the Lemon and uh, Daranka, Kerewan, along the swamps, uh, women garden, uh, those are a problem. Those are in the pipeline. Youth transport, Madam Speaker, with the government, I got promise that, uh, and it's also in the plan, they're looking for fund, which I was told is because of Gambia's business. Madam Speaker, these are some of the uh, I get. And when it comes to water, because NAVIC is doing but not completed and it's, they didn't cover all my areas, but I'm happy to tell you from donors and other partners, 
I am, I'm able to lobby and secure Bohol for almost all my 11 constituencies. Every, 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 almost all my 11 communities in my constituency. I lobby from partners because that's my job um, to come here around. Um, every member is from a constituency and they're all happy that they have their structures available uh, from the chieftaincies to the alcalos and the like. My constituency and that of the old Yundum are unlucky to have a chief on our own. Uh, because the uh, constituency, as I used to say, was one big constituency called Combonot. When it was really demarcated into three, we, ha we still have one chief. So my people, and I'm sure the people of Old Yundum, uh, is still a concern that we also want to have our, our own chief because the responsibility and the function of chiefs is still a problem in our areas, as people talked about land areas and all, land issues and other areas, is still a problem in our constituencies. But we find it very difficult to solve because one chief is responsible for three constituencies. So I want to appeal to the Minister of uh, uh, Lands to consider that, and also the Minister of Finance to consider that, because I one time approached the Minister of Lands, he says it's going to incur cost, so government needs to plan on it. So the chief financial planner is the Minister of Finance. He has to plan on that because it's a concern to my people. Madam Speaker, when you come to security also, the living conditions You know, the passport soldiers says this is, that's where they can also have. So Gambia is no more, now not participating in any peace missions with the Committee Defense and Security, with NDA the Ministry. They've told us that with the men, friends to be able to talk to us and also consider that one that is, is who will come to your constituency the way you planned it is. Obviously, I want to thank him this because his last presidential tour, he tours, he goes to constituencies and conducts meetings, one center and goes out. But for me, last presidential uh, tour, I was opportune to liaise with the office of the president and the protocol for the president to have uh, similar to a, a, a tour of my constituency. Why I did that? Because it, say, it has been said in the saying that one who knows it feels it. So I want the, the president to feel the burden of my people behind the airport. So when I came here, I told I, But those behind the airport, starting from the Mandinering, the Kungujangs, the Kubunes, the Galoyas, which are in Como Central, the Makumbayas, the Kubarukos, the Babylon, are a big problem. So but I'm opportune to get the president to feel the, the suffering of my people, to feel that, the, the condition of that road, which I believe when it comes to, uh, to, to cabinet, president will be one of my supporters to support the cause of that. So these are, are, are the, some of the concerns that I, I, I have from my people, that, uh, which are, are concerned to them. So obviously, um, as today is the last session, I think I need to make this clarification made by a uh, member for Serakunda is true. People are in the, in the headlines in news me medias, the, last, the tenor of the fifth legislation ends today. No, I stand to be corrected. Today is our last session. But our channel continues until on. I should not know, but just the clarification is the day before the sitting of the next session. The day preceding. Thank you, thank you. I have another 15 minutes again. <laughs> okay, the table more. office can issue a press release to clear that. Very good. That's what I wanted to clear because it's, you're saying that today is the end of the sessions. No, and I'm very happy. That's why I said that the table office should issue a press release to clear that. I was having if, two minutes. I haven't yeah, seen it on the papers, but since that is the, the case. Before. So last to conclude, I want to see forgiveness from anybody. Honorable member for Bushumbala sometimes acts funnily. I may offend, and I know as a human I must offend. I seek for forgiveness from anybody that I have offended. From my heart, I don't have any atom of, of any 
hate it for anybody because that's me because tomorrow or next tomorrow I may answer to the call of the Almighty. So I am forgiving to anybody and I also want everybody to forgive me being my members, the staffs, the, 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 the support staffs on the, on the, on the, in the down floor, please let everybody forgive the Honorable Member for Busumbala and also the executive because sometimes it's, it's not easy. Office of the Office of the Speaker and the Office of the Clerk of the National Assembly with staffs and my colleagues. Honorable Speaker, in 2017, when we, when we were inaugurated in, in Parliament, um, we were all new. We were asked to send in our, our CV. And we've seen people with their master's degree, bachelor's degree, diplomas, yet they have to undergo an induction training so that you are able to deal with the proceedings in the National Assembly. I am saying this because I just wanted to thank the staff of the National Assembly for taking us through, uh, providing us the knowledge to be able to do the functions that is required of us. that we're working with the National Assembly. We couldn't have done better if they have not cooperated with us, as alluded to by my colleagues. It's a win for the Gambia. On our last session, we have done much as expected of us. So we appreciate the efforts um, of every Gambian being in the legislature, the executive, the judiciary, and everybody. Uh, Old Union constituency that is located in the center of two constituencies and not closer to the coast and also closer to the, the airport end where you have the forest and other parts. So we find it very difficult to be part providing us an opportunity to get a school for the people of my constituency located in Sinchisori. That is an achievement within the five years because it has been advocated by my office to ensure that the people of that community are able to get the school they wish for their kids. We also have expanded electricity program uh, or projects, um, the parts of you know Maria Makunda, Yuna, Labakore, you know Sarepate. We are not electrified during the course of our mandate. I mean, the government of the Gambia was able to give us that support. A little more part that has not been electrified. And I think the Minister for Energy is not here. Um, the Vice President can take up that so that they can continue expanding the, 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 the project for the people around that end. Um, Honorable Speaker, before I go forward, I have to thank my constituency for bestowing trust in me in 2017. I am not the most educated person in that constituency neither am I the most aware individual in the constituency. The course that I have taken to deliver on their expectations, and I must continue doing that. Honorable Speaker, we have concerns. Security is a concern in that constituency. Honorable Speaker, a population of more than 50,000 people, you have about five police posts but yet still, the crime rate in that constituency is even higher than Banjul and other areas. Yeah. The police stations do not have vehicles for police to, to go on their daily routine, you know, uh, 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 patrol. This is a concern. Young boys are just coming up to become criminals in that part of the constituency or the country. And I think the government, through the Minister of uh, interior. So that is not what Gambia used to be. We used to be outside till 12 o'clock, 12 a.m., 1 a.m. But hardly now you go and find people sitting outside till 1 a.m.
that is not happening anymore. So I think the Minister of Interiors should be able to help us um, to ensure that our constituencies, our people are safe, and then we move on our business on a daily basis. Water, Honorable Speaker, is a problem in that constituency. We have pipe bond waters. Water is not coming until 2 a.m. when everybody is almost going to bed or almost on bed. 2 a.m. This is the problem. Under my office personally, with my partners, I tried so hard to ensure that I gave 20 completed bowhole to my constituency. But this does not solve the problem. And uh, yeah, daily, daily, daily works. Honorable Speaker, daily basis. I mean, there is nobody to address that. That is not good for our country. We have been faced with a terrible flood on a yearly basis. This problem stability to get there and then solve why the water is being flooded in that community. That is what we need to look at. The Minister for Works, I think I have instructed. This was said in a rally. The Minister was there, the President mentioned it. And I hope that the President or the Minister for Works will take up that responsibility. And you don't want to lose that. I think they need the help of the government so that they can get the road constructed. Honorable Speaker, before I conclude, I just have to thank the electorates. We have plans ahead from today. We ask them, for, we ask for their forgiveness, that we have done a lot of things that others might not be happy about. But such is life. This is representation. We represent the people for everybody in that constituency. As we come to the end of our term, we will go back again and then seek for their mandate. And we will come back to, to deliver on more projects that we have done for them. Insha'Allah, Rabbi, we will do that. The of the clerk, the deputy clerk, the directors, everybody supported our course during these five years. Today, like I said, we can do the proceedings on our own without the involvement of any of these staff. And then we, 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 we want to make sure that we come back to this parliament and continue doing the work. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for the floor. Honorable Speaker, first of all, I would like to seize this opportunity <coughs> to thank the Almighty Allah for giving us the strength, the health to witness today. Honorable Speaker, I would also like to thank the peace-loving people of Loa Badibu for having the trust and confidence in me to represent them in the House of Parliament. Honorable Speaker, I will extend my sincere appreciation to the office of the clerk, office of the speaker, and of course my colleagues for working with me to make sure that we all achieve what 
I sincerely want to thank the government of the day through the Minister of Agriculture. Honorable Speaker, the Minister of Agriculture is a friend to the people of Lower Badi. I will say it in that way for the fact that uh, we have been crying here for the farm equipment that we need as a community so that we can do what is expected of us as farmers and uh, the minister responsible she already answered to some of our calls by providing power tillers and some of the farm equipment to the people of Lower Badi. And uh, we work with her to make sure that the issues that we raised here before, like um, federal roads or the roads linking from Bani to their rice field to be constructed. Bear for the people of Lower Badibul, particularly those living in the north. You may see them carrying a pregnant woman with donkey cart, horse cart, but today that's history. I would like to thank the Minister of Health and the Director of Fula and Yalalba. Almost we have 18 villages at the lower body will not and still. Honorable Speaker, I will be very brief today, but before I will take my seat, I will, and he is very caring. He saw us the way, how to do this work, how to go about it, how to comport ourselves and how to approach issues. If we have arrived here today, if people are celebrating him, if I don't, I'm not fair to myself and I'm not sincere. That is the Honorable Member for Serakunda, your service to the nation. Honorable Speaker, I also want the Minister of Defense to explain it to this August Assembly, the issues surrounding the territorial integrity of this country, because we all know that we are a sub like the minister to set more light on that, to explain it to us. What are the issues responsible for this, and what can we do as a nation together to solve this issue? Honorable Speaker, I won't take more time today because uh, the statement that you have gave in the morning honestly touches all areas and how to do this work. Honorable Speaker, I won't waste more time today but to thank again the Office of the Clerk, my colleagues, the media, the support staff, everyone for their service to the nation. I'm saying thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, table office, um, the, <laughs> the chambers appear to be empty. I was just out. Deputy clerk number one. Ladies
Piano is. And uh, also thank them once again, as they have already entrusted me to go in for the position again. And I hope and pray that also thank your office. The majority have been together with you for the past five years, and I am asking forgiveness from each and every one of you for it may be impossible to stay together for five complete years. On two Our consequence, it doesn't acquire us to write. started it but I want to go a little bit further for us as the fifth legislative we are going and probably many of us are coming back the coming or the newcomers that are coming in the sixth legislative will completely depend or will especially when it comes to projects that are on the ministry of agriculture we've seen a lot of money that is going into that ministry but it couldn't pay any dividends to the But sometimes you look at it, it doesn't make sense to you. And, and I, asked, I, I didn't see the Minister of Agriculture here, but I know the Vice President is here. A project like NEMA, if another project comes to succeed, I think what makes sense is to continue on that implementation and complete it for the 
people to get benefit out of it. will not be completed. It doesn't make sense. I think the Minister of Finance has to, he has to be more proactive about agriculture. If we look at the level of their implementation, the implementation of the ministry, if we did not give them enough resources, it is directly has demarcated a land and say it's going to be a reserve for industrial purposes which I asked the minister last time but I couldn't get an answer I'm not denying government to have Yeah, it is not solved. Minister of Interior are almost standing on the road the whole day under the sun. I don't know what an insult. I think your ministry has to provide an incentive for them and also, especially when it comes to their health, because what they are doing has a lot of risk. Finally, the petroleum minister is not here on the And these electric poles are now old. They are completely dilapidated. The concretes are getting out. Some of them, it's only the road that remains standing. And it's very risky. This is existing in five communities in Jara West, including Mansa Congo, Soma, Kanikunda, Karantaba, Sankuya. In all these communities, there are poles, there are electric poles that has been there for over 40 years. President, to extend this information. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Honorable Member for Sanementere. Yes. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, if you look at these women, how they toil every day, early in the morning by 6 o'clock when I'm going
We need to create a moratorium away. So their labor is going in vain. At least they can go and keep them there if they are not bought. Madam Speaker, coming to see all the interventions when things go, 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 the going get the last time the incident happened at Tangi, before this unit reached Tangi, bush that end, end up being composed of food. the other thing is the skill centers the whole of Combo there is no skill center our youths will finish school and then be loitering in town If they tell you that it's the guy who's, who built this house, you will, not, you will not imagine it. Young boys, and they have a future. Let us try to do something. For Learn skills that will help them tomorrow to avoid. Madam Speaker, my other issue is about Bruce Ubi. The last time I said it here, nothing is being done about it. The people of Bruce Ubi have been left with heavy tax. The least household paying is $4,000 the least household is four thousand dollars and yet if you go to the local government act it is saying sixty percent of your tax will go back to the community but with bursubi is not the case they are paying tax yes they don't deny to pay tax even though it is high they, they are paying it but they are
Two of my villages, Sukuta and Burufut, are involved in that tournament. But it's unfortunate. They have no good fields. Burufut West. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bill Cameron North. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I want to take this opportunity to thank you so much. And when I did so, I came to the conclusion it's better. And I went to my people. I was lucky to be elected. And there I am representing them. that I am so much fascinated to the sports. Anytime I bring about the sport issue here, I always get contribution to make history for the Gambia, for the Gambia to participate in the AFCON 2022 finals in Cameroon. And I want to thank the team right down from the president of the Gambia Football Federation the entire technical team, the coach, and the players, the captain for that matter, who retired uh, from the national service recently. Indeed, uh, Pamodo did a lot for the Gambia. He participated under 17 for the first time. The Gambia participated and, in fact, uh, emerged victorious. In my farewell statement, I want to make reflection of issues of concern to my constituency that I've been addressing. That's still unanswered to it. And we resolved to an agreement for the firing to be relocated. The president made a, a, a pronouncement at Birkama in 2018 that the firing will be relocated towards my Quakesons is cry. I was all along emphasizing that we need to do prevention rather than curing. Unfortunately, 
an incident that caused the life of a lady happen as a result of the firing range. I do electricity and water is always an issue that I raise. The Minister of Energy is not here. We are very close or we have the power plant in Grikama North, but many communities in the area are without electricity supply. I said we should be compensated, at least for the noise that our people always have. Water supply is a problem as well, very erratic. A big community like Chembuje, at a point I requested for borehole, we are told that Chambuja is not qualified because it's under Nawek. We can have Nawek water, and we can also get the borehole from water resources. Nawek should look into that. Brikama drainage, we have highways or roads that are constructed, but that ended creating havoc to the people during rainy season, flood all over because there is no drainage system. The Ministry of Works promised that they will look into it. In fact, we conducted survey all around Birkama. That was four years ago. Then up to now, nothing is done about that. The fish market. The Honorable Mr. Fisi is not here. I've been raising this issue too. Nothing is done. The fish market is as dirty as anything that you can think of. You never think that human beings can sit at that place and sell fish that people like all of police have been talking about the road network all over, and I've been racing this road network, the key among them, the Birikama Bar Floto Mandira Ring uh, Road, it was part of the supplementary appropriation bill. The road is not constructed, even the foundation stone is not laid. Other people are, are thanking or congratulating the government that their road has started or their road has been constructed. What is wrong with that of the Birikama? Uh, Birkama, that is the Birkama Bar Floto Mandinan area. I also call for the link roads in that main road, Makumbaya, Galoya, Kubune, to east communication in those areas. Birkama Kathakunda, Nyonfele Gunju Road was also part of the supplementary appropriation bill. Well, yet still no work has started in the area. We also call for the link roads in that main road, Nyonfele Bonsa to Taibat Road, Birkama is the headquarters of New Town to Misra up to the Bafuloto Highway, uh, Jaliba Kuyate uh, Highway, that is the, at Nyambai College, where the Vice President has a residence, and then the Nyambai Babagalde Main Road, Misra Main Road, Daru Hairo Main Road, Jamisa Main Road, Jalamba Main Road, Chambuje Sabukunda, uh, Bafulo, linking to the Bafuloto Road, when these roads are, are addressed, the movement of vehicles around Bikama, just like a regional capital, will be east. Madam Speaker, the high cost of living is a talk of town. Somebody said the government should explain. I don't think there should be an explanation in this. What we should be doing, is that, or what the government is to be doing, is to address the situation. Things cannot go like this. Every day, sky prices are increasing. Something is wrong somewhere. You go to a shop this evening, this next morning, you'll find the price to be increased. I think there should be a control. We are not saying that there should be price control, but the way things are going, I think people are doing things deliberately. As a government, we cannot continue to entertain those kind of things. Madam Speaker, I just spoke to the minister about the land that was uh, that was occupied by the Bikawa, power, uh, the Bikawa power plant. I did pass a, a, a parliamentary question here for the compensation to be done to the owners, but the first minister of uh, uh, lands did tell me that they cannot do the compensation. Okay, I also asked whether the part of the land that is not occupied can be returned to their owners. He said they are going to look into it. When the next minister comes, that's on class prompted the government to set a tax force to investigate into the matter. Like my colleagues mentioned, commissions have been set, tax force has been set, inquiries have been conducted, but after all, we will not see anything. I want the Honorable Minister or the Vice President to inform us about the, the state of the tax force. 
when will the task force complete its findings and then report to the national or to the president of course to the national assembly i thank you thank you very much um, the honorable nominated member sam musa thank you madam speaker for giving me the floor also to lend my support the end of the five year term in the national assembly this is the last session madam speaker in my career in the political field i feel so delighted today that witnessing the end of this five years madam speaker so delighted to see myself witnessing the end of this five years Myself, right honorable member of Serekunda, honorable Khalifa Salla, a senior parliamentarian, veteran politician, honorable Sidi Ajata, member for Wuli West. Usman, uh, Usman, the member for Banjul North, Honorable Usman Silla, member for Banjul North, and uh, uh, Right Honorable Swaib Toure, member for Woodley East. But all, Madam Speaker, here is the Vice President. Her, her Vice President, Madam Asad Toure, who is also a part, is a candidate who are among those who sacrificed at that time to face the challenge. So therefore, I cannot exhaust my deliberation without mentioning these people in this August House, as today is the last session of the five years. Madam Speaker, having said that, I must again, first of all, thank His Excellency, the President, Adam Abarov, whom you know he is not an ungrateful person. Who ever see the collection members among? He has given everybody his quarter, Madam Speaker. Very grateful. He is not ungrateful, very grateful. Each and every member of the collection 2016, he has given you, you either take it or you okay. But you will not say he has never made any attempt to open. So I must thank him. I was appointed here. He offered me as a state minister. But with my honesty, myself, I cannot take it. I cannot carry the job. I know the area where I can, I can, I can occupy. And then today, when he offered me the position of a parliamentary, I said, that's my place. So he's very grateful. I must thank him. And Madam Speaker, thank God Gambians have him during these five years. There is no senior parliamentarian in this August House other than me. For that, I will say God giving. Whether one like it or not, I witnessed the First Republic in the National Assembly. 
I have seen, I'm the ref, I'm the, you are the ref, Madam Speaker, but today I'm the chief ref in this August House, who can compare and contrast all the three decades. There is nobody also here who can challenge me on that. I have seen, I have been a fighter. Until, as people like to boss, you must have a degree. This man is not educated. This man is not a degree holder. No! It is the people who are to determine who will represent them. That's why all the time we are crying for honestly, for language, because one day we will even have a president honestly, who has not been to school. But the brain is there, you know how to handle people. You can be a PhD, you cannot even handle a chicken. So, Madam Speaker, I have seen the First Republic. I have seen the Second Republic. I have seen the Third Republic. What I have witnessed in the First Republic, I, through my participation, that's why the kind of government came in 1994 when I was in Parliament. Then I used to see the, 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 the ambassador, American ambassador, British ambassador and EU representative and I know my contribution to that and I know the First Republic what they have done I have been a victim losing my job nine years, nine months I was dismissed without no cause simply because I was accused I am a sympathizer to a political party. I have seen all this, I know. So nobody can tell me anything. And even during the Allegheny Commission, my file was called from this August after the Allegheny Commission. It's just everybody in this country at that time knows what Majangosa, who Majangosa Musa is. So today, I have seen the Second Republic, I serve here, nominated by the former, former president, President Yaya Jami, nominated me. Again, appoint me here, also I serve in his government as a deputy governor in the region. Then you have NCP and APRC alliance we are going to. So I witnessed what that again, again, in the Third Republic. With the cooperation of the leader, who is not only fearful, that's President Adam Abaro. Not only fearful. That's why the day before Saturday, I was listening to him at Basse. He was telling the people of Basse, constituency, concerning about uh, uh, magazine. He know what magazine is to him. He said, I will not be the same, the same part with you, and then the next one said, you become taller than me. He him. He always break the record. I have been fighting with my, my party in the First Republic for almost 20 years. And then the Second Republic, the transition, the, the, God has kept him and asked him to bring him to lead us. And he is very grateful to the Almighty. He's very mindful, very careful, humble. I have seen leaders. I have witnessed what has been transferred in the First Republic. In my constituency, in Kerewan, there's a two black stone generator lying down there for over five, six, almost ten years until the time I came to Parliament. I thought that the EU ambassador was behind. Uh, PPP, to have this seat, you not have this life. 
If if government I can write a book. I never travel. It was first time to go with the president Jammeh to AU in, in 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 Addis. I said I have never boarded a plane. You could not believe. You can ask the chief of protocol and the green youths who are on board. Prayer like he said, Madam Kosa. So, Madam Speaker, I repeat again, I must still continue to thank His Excellency the President for the way and manner he has handled during these 45 years the democracy we were crying all along. For 22 years, the people are crying for democracy. And now we all know, I have witnessed the Parliament for a second. This is the Parliament that since 1960s, since we came to independence, there has never been a parliament like this. That's why when some people are laughing, they're just shouting, hey, Robert Stamp Parliament, Robert Stamp, I was in the First Republic. <laughs> Those who in favor, yes. Those not in favor, you have only one or two. You call that a democracy? Because they are the majority, they are South, they are democratic. And it's a good point. Gambia would have, what see the Jada is, what see the Jada is saying, Gambia would have been somewhere today. Gambia would have been somewhere today. So, I, 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 even if time is open, I can sit down. I've, at least I have seen. Said something. I've said something that even that alone is enough. And we have seen it here. So man, I don't want to go into a lot of things, but all of what I'm saying to tell the Gambian people, this parliament, there has never been a parliament like this. I was in the first republic, I know how I have been molested inside there, you know, because they are the majority. It has never been a new thing here. I marched out from parliament in the First Republic, myself and my leader. So when I was asked to go out from the, here, the time is up. Your time is up. Something to do. Your time is coming from anybody. Honorable yeah. member yeah. for Fonyi Bonali, please. Honorable yeah. nominated yeah. member, yeah. Um, Gaite, please. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. I'm sure I'm not going to miss this part of it. <laughs> My mic is gone. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. I couldn't miss the opportunity today to force myself to come because I couldn't miss this opportunity to say the thank yous. So I guess today for the first time, I'm going to give the Honorable Ministers a break and also going to give President Barrow a break and focus on the thank yous because I think it has been to be the darling of the National Assembly. I'll give myself that credit because of a lot of things that have happened in between and have contributed to my growth as a person. And I appreciate the opportunity. Um, the first thank yous will go to my parents. I think um, my parents are kind of unique in a way that I would say maybe I'm the only young politician that have parents threatening to move me out of their house if I leave politics. It's interesting. Other parents will tell you, don't join politics. This is not good. You're going to risk everything. But mine... They, both of them encourage me to stay on and fight. And I appreciate them for allowing me to be who I am. I remember when we lost the elections, the presidential elections, I was so down. And I was having this conversation with my father and I told him, I think I have to give up because this has been, I've given my all and I just feel rejected and disappointed. And I don't think I can win this. And he told me, Kumba, I said yes. He said, you might never feel, you might never win this fight because I think you've already won. I said, why would you say that? And he said to me, because you are on the right side. You are on the side of the truth. 
and sometimes being on the side of the truth means the fight never ends. You have to continue fighting and you have just started. And to me, that was profound. And thank you, Daddy, for those inspiring words. Um, still on the thank yous, um, I felt when I heard that Solo was murdered. And this was my inspiration to people of Dipakunda that approached me first and said, we want you to run for parliament. And I remember submitting my applications and I went for primaries for the UDP. And I guess because I was a young 28 year old, um, they didn't, uh, the people that were doing the interviews and stuff really maybe didn't take me seriously because we all know what women face during this kind of struggle. And my, the, Madi was chosen, Honorable Madi Sise, for the seat and he won. And then all of a sudden, and this was so unexpected, my journey with President Barrow began. I remember sitting in my office day before the new MPs were sworn in and the president himself called me. This was a surprise and nominated me as a member of the National Assembly. I remember on the day, it was around 11 o'clock that I received my package from the vice president's residency. So it was so late, so I couldn't even believe it. So I think after everything that has happened, I think today is the day I should tell the president thank you for taking the chance on me. And I think he too owes me a thank you. But before I get there, I want to thank on our behalf, my behalf and his behalf, the leadership of the United Democratic Party for having the faith in all of us because the president knows it wasn't this executive that believed him and put him into into and put him up as a candidate it was then the executive of the united democratic party and because that happened he happened and i happened so a huge thank you goes to the united democratic party to solo of representing my country and representing the youths of this country and also thank you for doing the most amazing thing anyone has ever done to, for me and that is firing me I think that was the most amazing thing that has happened in this journey and it gave me an opportunity as a person to contribute towards the governance structure of this country, towards molding our new line to make sure we safeguard the democracy that people lost their lives for, that all of us fought so hard for. Thank you very much. Um, we have a veteran that has declared that he is not coming back to this house. Honorable Member of Sarah Kunda, thank you. It has been an inspiration working with you. And I know sometimes we bump heads, but all the time I push, I push, I push, because I'm the Honorable Member of Wooly West. I adore you, I love your heart, and I appreciate your support throughout this journey for keeping me grounded. Thank you very much, I appreciate you. To the leadership of the House, Honorable Speaker, it has been a pleasure to witness your leadership. It's very hard, particularly when you're female and you're actually the umpire of a great number of males. It's not easy. And I know also I've been a very challenging MP for you and your staff, but it was for the interest of nation, for pushing you forward. You know, Halifa is laughing. He once told me, I found you very challenging in my journey, and I appreciate that. Um, to my favorite person and my favorite people in this parliament, and that is the staff. Fat who would even cry when I'm in, <laughs> when in the middle of the fight, I'll go down and found her crying and she would tell me, Kumba, please come down, yo Halenga. I'll be like, stop crying, <laughs> you don't need to cry. We're all doing this for the best interest of the country and I, I love you. Thank you for the support, for the pushing me throughout this whole journey. Um, to one thing that was really one of the reasons why I was honored to be nominated, and that is to have the opportunity to contribute towards giving Gambia a new governance structure, towards molding a newfound democracy, and looking forward for us as a fifth legislature to give Gambia a new constitution which is going to be the foundation of the new governance structure. 
I call this uh, our unachieved legacy. It is a missed opportunity, and I hope the sixth legislature will fight to bring this constitution back to give us a proper, proper start of our governance structure. Um, the speaker earlier on has highlighted all our achievements. I wouldn't go back to that, but just a piece of advice to this new executive. Um, I don't think sometimes we take time to reflect on how serious our role is, both as parliamentarians and as ministers. For example, I remember I, ha I was having this conversation, I said, I don't want to ever be the minister of health in this country. Because everyone that dies, God is going to question you one day <laughs> about it. I think it's a very serious, serious role. And as, as, as um, civil servants, as public servants, it's an honor to be it. But I think we sometimes need to reflect on how important the roles we are playing are and taking it more seriously. I am so concerned about the health sector of this country. I remember my auntie on her dying bed, which could, she, they couldn't even find a proper bed for her. The bed was broken and she had to be laid, and that's the bed she died on. And I remember my mom telling me, do you know what, she, what her last words were? I said, no, and she said, she told the nurses, you are putting me on this kind of bed? That I will never forget. Because it showed me the responsibility we all have towards our people. And I think each and every one of us, from the president down, we really need to start reflecting and taking our roles very, very seriously. Because apart from this life, the next life, each and every one of us is going to be questions about what we have done when we were giving these roles. And I think it's so important that we all reflect, putting everything aside. I think I still have another four minutes. Um, to the president of this country, um, I think I would advise you to let the opposition thrive. I think as opposition, it is even more important now more than ever for us to continue our role of holding the executive accountable. We owe that to our people. I personally am not giving up on this tax. I will keep on fighting with everything that is in me to make sure we hold the government accountable. And I think the president should create that environment and allow the opposition to thrive. I'm hearing issues about reconciliation. I think we can reconcile and have peace. But still, there needs to be a vibrant opposition in this country, and I will be part of those that will keep that alive. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Honorable member for Bondali is still not around, Kantora. And if she's not here, then we'll just have to proceed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker, for giving me the floor. Thank you so much. It's been a long day uh, since the beginning of the adjournment debate. First of all, I want to congratulate ourselves. It's been a long, long, long way since we started this journey. Here we are in these hallowed chambers, which marks the end of the fifth legislative session, probably if need be, would have been or would be an emergency session when it's deemed fit by government or by executive. Having said that, Honorable Speaker, I want to begin my contribution giving thanks to Almighty Allah for keeping me fit and sound in LT to embark on a journey entrusted on me by the people of Kantora constituency, to represent them to be their mouthpiece, to advocate their challenges in parliament and contribute immensely in terms of resource distribution in budget allocation to suit their need. I think for the past five years I've done that. 
I did the job to the best of my ability, and I've represented the constituency to the best of my ability. I say to them, thank you so much for picking me out of the lot to a privileged position, which is not a bad right, but it is out of privilege to bestow trust and confidence in me that if you are elected or if you are chosen by them, you will serve the purpose. I will say a big thank you to the electorate of Kantura constituency. Secondly, allow me to thank my parents and family and loved ones for standing by me resolute throughout the journey. As a young parliamentarian, it's not easy. There are difficult moments and there are also challenging times, but you need their guidance and counseling. So the parents, loved ones, and families, thank you so much for being with me. I also equally want to thank sincerely your leadership, the entire staff of the National Assembly, the clerk, the various office holders in this assembly for making our job easier for us to deliver as expected. Having said that, I also want to thank the government of the day for nurturing the newly found democracy since 2017 to date. It's a very difficult task after inheriting a fragile nation, serve under 22 years of bad leadership, thank leadership, the president, the cabinet ministers, for working hand in glove to ensure the newly found democracy is nurtured to ensure the newly found democracy is consolidated by their concerted efforts. I also want to thank them for really transforming the lives of my people. Because I know as government, the primary responsibility of every government is to transform the lives of people you govern. How do you protect their lives and property? Is responsibility that you cannot shy from. Under the leadership of His Excellency President Baro and my leadership in Parliament, yeah, opportunity for the people of Kantura constituency, ranging from good roads and bridges ranging from supply of ambulances, ranging from proliferation or expansion of electricity that is put up there or established there through a PPP, private public partnership, under the watch of His Excellency. I bring you greetings and thank from the people for really focusing on how to decentralize development Going on the days whereby development was centered in the urban area, but through the transformative agenda, through the transformative idea of the leadership of His Excellency, development has now been decentralized in the urban in rural areas now. The colleges, the bridges, the schools, the hospitals, women vegetable garden, these are really life-changing opportunity for the people of my constituency. I wouldn't be very much fair if I didn't appreciate the good job we've achieved under this current government. Having said that, I also want to 
thank your leadership in this parliament here as speaker and the leadership of both sides, minority and majority leader, for coming together. More so for the executive taking a giant strike to give parliament its autonomy. This is never easy in any jurisdiction. It's called for a battle. It's called for fight to make sure autonomy is given to parliament. But as a leader, if you believe in democracy, you will also accept its principles that is accompanied with democracy. And it's through those visions, through that leadership, these autonomies attain under this fifth legislation. That alone is a significant achievement by the National Assembly, of course, by extension, the executives. Honorable Speaker, I also extend my prayers and condolences to the sympathize to the people of Kumbul in my constituency for a fire outbreak. Also the Vice President, the NDMA, I sent pictures to the CEO, Daban Ko, for an urgent event by government to rescue this, this, this poor man. for what you have done for your nation. And we thank you so much for the statesmanship. This assembly and everybody will really miss you, but we pray for your health. I want to recognize and congratulate and thank the UDP leadership for entrusted me, putting me up as a candidate in 2017 elections whom with having anybody who has offended us in one way or the other, directly or indirectly, and also seek forgiveness for offending anyone knowingly or unknowingly. Uh, it's been a long, long journey, as I stated, where we began and here we are. Some of us has grown to big boys now, while others are also grown, you know, aging now. Some has also grow gray hair, but to be honest with you, it's really a tasking job. And uh, what an experience as well we've, we've really got in this parliament. But thank you goes to the current government. Uh, it's not easy, to, as, I, to, as I told you, to maintain democracy in a fragile state. It's been a, an enormous tax for them to, to make sure that newly found democracy is nurtured, newly found democracy so on that note, I thank you have made and the concerns that you have raised 
with regards to issues in your various constituencies. And I sincerely hope that they will eventually be addressed, those of them that have not been addressed. And all portfolios. So I'm not sure whether, Your Excellency, you may, yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Appointees. interest in one way or the other. As Gambians and those living in the Gambia who are interested in seeing the Gambia move forward, I want to thank all of you for being here today and to thank the Lord Almighty who has given us the chance, the opportunity to be able to go through many years to finally come today to sit down and reflect about our country. I have heard a lot and we have noted. And I want to appreciate you on behalf of the executive. Some of them are here today. Some are out unavoidably because of exigency of services. They are not being here. It's not to disrespect this house, but because it coincides with assembly. My dear sister, a time that was full of doubts, a time that people did not have the opportunity of feeling that we would make it. A time that your leadership, your experience and your professionalism and resilience, irrespective of where you are, and I have heard you talk and give, it gives me hope, it gives, then we will not give And can finish it and you have also but then one thing that we have to recognize is that whatever we may do if the enabling environment is not there it's useless and we have experienced as a country the past the will the power he has allowed the different arms of government to be independent as much as possible we are on a journey the issues you have raised are quite clearly appreciated and we know they are real, they do occur and we are aware of them. There are certain issues you have raised that have already been completed. Something I think that has been clearly articulated by most of you about how this government has That, that is this 
street where we are, we are together. And we will always be together. Big proud pride. It is a legacy that you have, and people will live. You will not wait to wait for you to die. People will show you. All parties together is historical. There we are, but this one is historical because people were all focusing on we want a change, we want a better life, we want a better Gambia, we want to provide them courage. We need to let them feel that these changes are real, that the change is going to occur not by coercive means, but is going to uh, work with him. You have all appreciated the balance he has made. He has recognized every party. There is multipartyism. There is pluralism. There is freedom of expression. There is access to information. And creating the style of governance that is going on because of the type of leadership we have and all of you we are going back we will meet 